Hey guys, it's Dr. Lee again, and I'm coming to you again, just trying this video format out to see if I, you know, I, I know learning DermPath can be pretty tricky, so I wanted to see if, you know, using a video format, um, people would have a better, better time understanding these things. So this is, if you guys remember from the other day, this is spongiotic dermatitis. I guess before we jump into details, um, I should probably start out by saying this is a punch biopsy. So the reason it's a punch is, you know, this is a little needle core, like a little punching device and punch biopsies are defined by it being sort of deeper rather than broad. Um, and so, um, there, so punch biopsies are better for, uh, rashes. Um, and that's because when we're diagnosing rashes, um, I need to be able to see where the inflammation is, you know, if it's limited to the top or if it comes down here. So the three things that I'm looking for is where the inflammation is, what the inflammation is doing, and how the tissue is responding. So in this case, you can see this is a punch biopsy. Uh, the inflammation is pretty much around these blood vessels, you know, in the top, top of the dermis here, and as well as in the sort of the middle of the dermis, really not much going on down below. If there was inflammation down here, um, that would make me consider different di differential diagnoses. So, um, so what I guess the next step is what is the inflammation doing? So the inflammation seems to be the epidermis here seems to be kind of this. If you guys notice here, there's this paler in the epidermis, and as well, you can see that the epidermis is somewhat thickened in a process that we call acanthosis. Um, and it's irregularly thickened. And what that means is you got, you know, sort of some jagged reedy ridges. This here is a little bit broader. So you have a somewhat of an irregular uh, epidermal acanthosis or thickening. And now in this area over here, you have a little bit of hyperkeratosis, which just means, you know, extra scale. So let's come in and take a look at why we have this pallor. So the, this is, the pallor is here is because you can see that um, the pallor here is because we have edema fluid within the epidermis. Um, actually, if you notice here also, another thing that I didn't mention is that there's a little bit of pallor right underneath the epidermis too. And all of that pallor, including the pallor that you see in the epidermis here, these kind of clear spaces, this is all just fluid, edema fluid that's coming in. Um, and you know, this is the reason why we call this spongiotic derm because spongiotic dermatitis, uh, you, you, you can see the intracellular connections between the cells. You can even make out the, you know, the sort of the spinous processes. Um, and you know, it somewhat looks like the cut surface of a sponge. So that's why it's called spongiotic derm. And if we come out here a little bit, you'll see that uh, you know, these intracellular connections are still kind of remaining somewhat intact, right? Like they're, they're being stretched, but they're still somewhat intact. They're, they're uh, holding on for dear life. But out in this region here, you can see that, you know, this, the, the amount of edema fluid here is greater than the, than the uh, intracellular connections can, you know, can hold on to. So you form a little vesicle. Um, these generally happen in more acute cases. So let, let's say if you have, uh, like, like poison ivy or something like this, you know, you're going to get these vesicles, um, as well as there's another disorder called, um, dishydrotic eczema, which usually occurs on the hands and, and the feet, but you see vesiculation as well. So, so it's sort of the hallmark of an acute process. Um, so the, the next thing we're going to cover is why do we have this inflammation in here? Um, and the inflammation is is in there because these inflammatory cells, uh, which first sort of come out from around these blood vessels, but you'll see that they're sort of tracking up to the epidermis here. You see these little cells, the little black dots, they're tracking up into the epidermis. And once they get into the epidermis, they they call in a bunch of edema fluid, and that's why you have edema fluid in the epidermis, hence giving us this spongiotic look. And it's the same thing is kind of going on down here too, where you have uh, some edema fluid, and that's why it looks pale there. Now, we should probably go back and, and, and say that 
Spongy attic derm in general is a very, it's a nonspecific, it's a reaction pattern, really. Um, this reaction pattern encompasses several, you know, numerous disorders and, you know, wide, wide ranging from, you know, most probably the most common one is eczema. Um, eczema will show this exact uh, reaction pattern. Um, and, you know, another example is uh, poison ivy. Poison ivy will show this kind of reaction pattern. Um, you know, things like dandruff even, you know, dandruff uh, in a disorder called seborrheic dermatitis, which is a sort of a more severe form of dandruff, um, will also show this reaction pattern. So it's a nonspecific reaction pattern. There are clues um, to be able to sort of allow you to make distinctions from one another, but the, the most important clue is actually you know, a good clinical history from the patient. Did you, are you, have you had this your whole life? Probably eczema. Have you, have you, have you, uh, you know, contacted anything uh, like poison ivy? I mean, it becomes very straightforward. So a good clinical history is the most important clue. Now, the inflammatory infiltrate in here, um, you usually see a mixture, a mixture of lympho, lymphocytes and maybe some histiocytes, like this guy here is probably a little histiocyte. Uh, which has a little bit more of this pale cytoplasm around there. The smaller blue dots are, are lymphocytes. And usually it, there should be some eosinophils, which are, it's not perfectly clear here, but eosinophils are these like kind of pink granule. This may be like a degranulated eosinophil. See that little pink kind of uh, granules there? Oh, there we go. This is perfect one, right next to that thing, right next to that blood vessel, this cell. All right, so as a summary, spongiotic derm generally has a superficial and perivascular inflammatory infiltrate with lymphocytes, histiocytes, and eosinophils. And in the acute phase, um, actually, I'll, I'll go back and cover this, but um, in the acute phase, you have lymphocytes, the inflammatory cells come out, and they go into the epidermis in a process called exocytosis. Those cells are in the epidermis cause intracellular edema, and that's why it looks spongiotic. Over time now, you, you do get some changes. It's not always gonna look like this, and this one actually shows some of those changes. Your, your epidermis responds um, by getting thicker, and that word again is acanthosis. Um, it gets thicker, you form a thicker granular layer, which is sort of like this blue stuff. It's not very obvious here, but uh, like this kind of purple, stuff at the top there um, and you get thicker in a, in a pattern that's irregular and then also usually you get some increased scale and, and perikeratosis like this stuff out here um, anyhow I hope that was helpful um, it's not as scary when you know that once you identify that it's spongiotic derm um, that's that's basically enough information to give somebody so that they know what to do with it so if this was helpful, um, let me know. Put it in the comments and let me know what, what kind of things I need to do better on. And if you liked it, what was the most thing that you liked about it? Um, if you haven't already, you know, feel free to subscribe and please hit my like button so other people uh, will, will notice this material if it's helpful to you. Thanks very much.